Hello, this is Karen Dudek Brannon from Dr. Karen's Speech and Language, and I'm about to share with you some evidence-based strategies for treating language disorders. Now, from time to time, we all have those students who seem to sit on our caseloads forever, not making any progress, and sometimes we feel like we've tried everything and it hasn't worked. If this is you, I want to help you out. Now, you're probably here because you're an SLP or other related professional, and you're really dedicated to your field and being the best therapist you can be. I'd be also willing to guess that you're working with students who have poor language skills who just aren't able to keep up to their peers. And if you're anything like me, you might have tons of things you know your students need to learn and not enough time to get to at all. So you might end up spending your free time planning for your sessions and it's just really burning you out. I've been an SLP since 2004 and I've experienced every single one of these things firsthand. I hated treating language disorders when I first started practicing because they're so messy and treatment never seemed straightforward to me. But I made it my mission during my doctoral work to study and test tons of different strategies and I've done the legwork and compiled them into a quick guide for busy SLPs just like you. And I want to tell you about the theories and research that went into it so you know how to use it best. If you're working with students who are in school, one of their biggest challenges is mastering academic content. So here's what you need to know. One of the biggest culprits behind our students' academic problems is weak vocabulary. If you have a student with language impairments, even if they might be performing average on certain tests that only require them to name and identify words, chances are they still struggle to use these words across different types of activities, such as when they need to use the word in sentences or with different grammatical markers. Vocabulary is interrelated with so many other language skills. Research has shown that vocabulary in the early grades can actually predict how well a student will perform in reading later on in their academic career. We also know that vocabulary is correlated with reading comprehension and overall academic skills the entire time kids are in school. So the more words we know, the better we do because this solidifies our ability to learn and use words. Remember, we're thinking beyond just word identification and naming, but also thinking about an in-depth understanding of what words mean and how to use them. So what's the magic bullet to fixing this vocabulary issue? Well, here's a high level explanation. We need to focus on high priority words that will help students learn more difficult concepts. And it isn't just about teaching words. We also need to focus on increasing our students' metalinguistic awareness and show them how to use these words. So again, it's not just about content, it's about giving our students a framework for using the words. So you're probably asking yourself, what words do we pick? Let's think about how Isabel Beck, Margaret McEwen, and Linda Kukin categorize words. They organize words into three tiers. So tier one words are easy words that happen a lot during day-to-day -day conversation, like there or are or other connecting words. Then there are tier two words, which are difficult and happen often in ap academic settings or in books, such as words like compare or summarize or other academic vocabulary. Then there are tier three words, which are difficult, but are content specific and don't occur as often. So this might include words like ecosystem or invertebrate that might be associated with social studies or science or other content areas. So because tier two words are hard and because they occur often, these are the words that will be our highest priority. Since they happen so often, this will help our students understand what's going on so that they can learn more effectively. We don't really need to spend a lot of time on tier one because these words tend to be easier for our students, and we don't need to spend a lot of time on tier three words because they don't happen very often. So now that we understand what types of words we're teaching, how and why, let me explain the free resource I've created and what you should do next. So in the vocabulary booster, you'll get a definitions rating scale that will explain how you can assess your students with tier two vocabulary and get an in-depth understanding of how well your students can explain words beyond just identification and naming. I've also given you some syntax templates and shown you how to use them. 
Again, like I said, we can't just focus on telling our students what words mean. We have to give them practice using and explaining words. So these templates show you an easy way to do this. And of course, if you're going to work on teaching students to define words, you're going to need some words to use. So I've included 96 tier two word flashcards separated by grade level for grades kindergarten through fifth grade. So you know what words are appropriate to target at what grade and so that you have a starting point. Remember, don't stress about getting to all these words. This is about integrating the right types of vocabulary and showing your students how to use it so they can eventually learn to apply this process to words they encounter when you're not with them. This is where those deep meta skills come into play. So this is a great resource to help target those skills. I've also included some extra bonuses that will give you even more valuable tools to use with your students. So make sure to click on the button below and take advantage of this resource while it's still free. So here's what you can do now. First, click the button below and enter your email address in the box that pops up. That'll get you on my email list and you will get a copy of the vocabulary booster. If you ever have any questions about this resource, feel free to reach out to me at talk to me at drkarenspeech.com with any questions. I'd love to hear from you. Again, this is Karen Dudek-Brannon. I hope you enjoy the resource and thank you again for watching.